What is going on, my fellow programmers? It's Real Touch GML here, doing something a little bit different today. Today, we are going to go from scratch to a full out game. That is right. So, in this, I'm going to call them courses, we're going to be making a zombie game, a top down zombie game from scratch, how I would go about doing it. And I'm pretty sure you're going to learn something along the way. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. What you're seeing on the screen now, that is what the final product looks like. So that's what you have to look forward to, all right? So me speaking now, I have no idea what that looks like, but we're gonna get into it. So first off, what I like to do actually before I start up projects, and you'll notice this if you followed my, my Java tutorials series, is I like to just go into Paint and why is it coloring like that? I don't know. And what I like to do is just kind of sketch out what the game is going to look like, right? So uh, I'm expecting some 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 nice atmosphere here. So let's maybe we'll get like a darker sort of. And and this is going to be outside. I want the setting to be outside. Maybe we'll have some trees here. Okay, so we'll put some trees. And let's make that a darker color. Ah, uh, lighter actually, lighter. So put some trees down. Uh, and then we got the player here. We'll have him have his gun. And this is gonna be top down, of course. We can color that in. And he'll be shooting bullets. Blue, do, 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 do. And then the zombies will be coming at him. Which is pretty self-explanatory. So there's the zombies, and that's not closed. That's all right, you get the point. So that's what we're going to be doing. So they're going to be coming at them, and uh, I'm going to be. You're going to notice that I'm going to be reverting at a lot of tutorials I previously did. So yeah, I, I'll, I will link whenever I refer to a, a previous tutorial that I've done before. Then I will link that as an annotation. But also, we're probably going to have some nice, uh, nice, cool effects within here. So we're probably going to have a spotlight around our player. And I did download, or I don't know where I got it from. I got it from a while ago, but I've had it uh, a nice misty background that we're gonna have on top on the top layer. So it's gonna look nice and misty. It's gonna look like a bad day. And we're also going to uh, incorporate some 3D into it. Now that is going with the 3D engine that I had, and that is so the trees are gonna look 3D-ish, so so to say. Okay. And now the graph, all the graphics I use. I will put in the description for download. Those are free to use. Uh, you don't even need to give me credit. All right, so there we go. If that's <laughs> if if you can look at this not from the point of what it looks like now, but just the mechanic of it, then there you go. That's what we're going to be getting. Uh, and again, you did see that in the beginning, though. But uh, also, uh, so you're gonna, you're going to have your mouse uh, kind of point at your your player's going to point at the mouse. And you know when you shoot, that bullet will head directly towards the uh, way you position your mouse. And there we go. So hopefully you can hit the zombies and all of that. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sprites here. Not create a sprite, but create a folder or a group. And this is going to be called um, entities. There we go. And then I'm gonna create another group, static objects, and and then a uh, actually you know what that's probably good. And then I'm just gonna do the same for for the objects here. So entities and static objects. There we go. That's usually what I do within my projects. All right. So over in the entities, I'm gonna create a sprite. I'm gonna call it sprite player. And I'm going to load, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to load the sprite. I'm going to go to edit and I actually have a sprite sheet. So I'm going to go to file, create from sprite sheet. If we get out, uh, we go to pictures and we go to zombie course. As you can see, I have a sprite sheet somewhere in here. Walking shotgun strip. So here we go. So here's the strip. And so the number of images, let's see, let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven images. And they're all 64 by 64. There we go. So now you press OK, and it cropped all of them into a nice uh, image set that you can see the preview of the walking animation right there. So that's pretty cool. Let's 
Let's go ahead and do that. And let's modify the mask. So as you can see right now, there's this huge area around it. And I just want to modify the mask just a little bit. As you can see, if we go to modify mask and you see right here that we have, it, it, it's around the image, but not totally around the image. So let's do ellipsoid and let's kind of, uh, <clears throat> let's bring it, shrink it down just a little bit. There we go. We'll do 17 and from the top, And that's going above. Okay, so 21. Yeah, let's do 21. And then we'll do from the right, 54. That's going down. Let's do 40. 45 looks good. So now it, it takes out the little tips in there. So there you go. That's a more precision of a of a mask there. So there we go. So now we can hit precision collision detection. Actually, no, you don't want to do that. My bad. All right, and let's bring it back to ellipsoid. All right, there we go. So there is our player, and let's go ahead and center the origin. And we're going to put the origin, uh, and this is the rotating point of your, of your character. So you're probably going to want to line it up with your gun or the middle of your player's head. Now I'm just going to do the middle. You can do what you'd like. So there we go. Now we have our sprite player. There we go. So let's just leave that for now, and let's create that as an object. So object player. Let's go ahead and give it the sprite. And in the create event, I'm going to set some variables. All right. So I'm going to set image speed to equal zero, image index to equal zero, and walking speed equals, we'll say five. And the default, no, I'm sorry, let's, uh, let's say <clears throat> set speed equals 0 0.5 and we can change this along the lines so walking speed that's pretty self-explanatory that's how fast you're gonna go and set speed is basically the default image speed that I can just refer to without having to memorize 0 0.5 all right so if we go to our sprite here you can see that if we're not walking we don't want to have this animation play of him walking so the way we, way we can do that is uh, well, we'll get into that, but that's why I set the set speed so you can set the speed back to what it was. All right. So in this step event, we're just going to set up some movement here, and I'm going to say image angle. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Let's say yeah, image angle equals direction, and we'll say direction equals point direction. And we're doing this from the origin, so x, y to mouse underscore x, mouse underscore y. There we go. So let's let's create a room. Let me just name it room test. And let's pop a guy in there. And let's run it. So as you can see, now our player is now pointing to the mouse and rotating on the origin. So if you notice, if I go back over here and I put the origin over here, it's gonna rotate weirdly. As you can see, now it's rotating off of that, and that does not look good. So let's put that back to the head. And there we go. All right, so there we go. Now let's go ahead and let's press okay so it changes the name here. Let's put some movement in. So if keyboard check, and we'll, we'll create the WASD keys, W. Uh, needs to be three there. Then we're gonna set speed to equal five. And then S, and that'll be negative five. So now if we run it, as you can see, there it goes, but it, it doesn't stop. And here you, you can do a key release function, but just to make it a little bit cooler, I should say, I'm gonna create a friction. So it kind of slows down a little bit. Now this is totally a game mechanic that is up to you. You can have key released in there, but as you can see now, he kind of he doesn't slow down right away. I don't know, I think it makes it look just a little bit more realistic. Okay. <clears throat> and now of course, when we are 
walking, or when we hit the W or the S key, we need to be walking. So in here, this is, I'm just gonna comment to myself, um, setting the image. So I'm just gonna do a simple uh, if statement. If speed is greater than zero, um, <clears throat> image speed equals set speed. All right. And then I'm just gonna say else image speed all right, here we can do uh, do this. Image speed equals zero, and image index equals zero. There we go. And let's also set this to. We're gonna say that uh, double ampersand sign, which means and. In Game Maker, you can just say and, but we're gonna do the double ampersand sign because that's how a lot of other languages deal with that. So we're gonna say speed is greater than zero. I'm sorry, <laughs> not ampersand. We're gonna do this, which is or, which you can put or, but we're gonna put the two perpendicular lines. I'm not sure what those are called. All right, so there we go. So now if speed is greater than zero, that means we're walking forward. Then we're going to have the image speed to set speed. And then if we're walking backwards, it's gonna do the same thing. And in the create event, um, yeah, there we go. And I should actually use the variable I, I set up and where'd that go? Walking speed instead of five. So walking speed, we'll copy that, and we'll put it down there. All right, so now let's run it. Should I, it's always good to test your games as you go along. So there we go, now we have the walking, and it stops. Which I think looks pretty good, and we'll go backwards. There we go. All right, so, that is pretty cool. So now what are we gonna do? Let's go ahead and set up a quick scene. So I'm gonna create another room and I'm just gonna call this RM main and this will this will become the main room here. And let's just create it at a, let's turn off the grid. Let's make it double the size. So 1280 by, uh, I don't know what that is. What is that? 960. There we go. So now we have double the room size here. And let's start importing some backgrounds. So I'm gonna create a group in the backgrounds folder and I'll just name it scene. And let's create uh, grass. I'm gonna load this background up and I have it in the pictures folder here. And this I got off of online, this right here. All right. And let's create another background let's load it and it's going to be the misty background that I was talking about so I'm just gonna call this mist and actually you know what? I'll call it background mist it's always good to put what type it is in front of it so you never mix anything up so let's put background before this as well and now let's go back to the main and let's set that up so background we'll put the grass here which looks good and then on top of that we have the mist that you can see. And we can just set a horizontal speed. So we'll just set one. Uh, yeah, we'll just set a horizontal speed to it. I think that's good. All right, and then let's see. You, you can kind of you can kind of experiment with what looks good. So, you know, is it gonna look better with all of that laid out or stretch? You know, that's up to you. So I'm gonna make it stretched. I don't know, I kinda, I kinda think it looks just a bit better. All right, and it's not gonna be as, you know, like light and all that because we're actually gonna add that spotlight to the character. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make sort of this uh, this darkness around it. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, here. We'll, we'll keep the test room open just so we can test new things into the game. But yeah, let's, all right, what are we gonna do next? Let's Let's figure that out. I guess we can make the shooting next. So I'll go over to NDs and we'll create a new entity, Sprite Bullet. And I'm just gonna create this myself. It's pretty easy. I'm just gonna make a five by five, nothing too advanced. And we can create it like this. We'll make it that color. And I don't even know if, let's get, let's get crazy with this bullet that's the only art I can really do. 
let's do something like this. There we go. That's my bullet. All right. And there's really no need to center it. Um, all right. So let's go into the entities. Let's create that as an object. So object bullet. And we will set that. And in the create event, we're just going to set all of this ourselves. So move towards point. Mouse X. Mouse Y. Speed of 50, we'll say. There we go. All right. So now let's go, or hold on. Let's make sure that we can actually uh, create the bullet. So let's go do... Let's add an event, mouse, global mouse. Now you can do left button, and that if you do left button, that means they don't have to release the mouse in order to keep shooting. If you do left press, that means they need to tap the mouse every, they need to re-click it if they wanna shoot another bullet. So I'm gonna do left bullet, and this is just going to create a bullet on x comma y comma o bullet. Not o bullet, object bullet. Let's run it. And there we go. Now this looks a little odd. Um, so let's go ahead and make sure that we have a fire rate set. And let's make it just a little bit lower. All right, sorry, I have to do this every once in a while. Let's make the speed just a little bit lower. So we'll go to 10 and we'll create a fire rate. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna go into the create event of the player. We're gonna set fire rate to equal 15, we'll say. And 15, this will equal two bullets every second. So in global left pressed, well, well, first off, let's go ahead and create another variable real quick, just on top of that. Is firing equals false? Okay, so now in the global left button, we're gonna check if not is firing, then we're gonna create this bullet. Else, um, actually no. You know, here's what we'll do. And I, I just like that. I don't think I mentioned this before that I'm just going off of what I think is going to look good, you know. So this is not like a set thing that I planned out beforehand, you know. So there is going to be a lot of debugging. This is how you actually go through the process of making a game. So in here, I'm going to set is firing to true. So we can't refire. And alarm zero to equal fire rate. And in alarm zero, you just set, oh my God, this thing is annoying me. I might have to relaunch, relaunch studio here in a second, but we can, if it happens again, then I'll relaunch it. But, and then in alarm zero, we're going to set is firing to equal false, right? So basically what's happening is you can shoot it, but then it's gonna have to wait 15 milliseconds, or you know, however long. 50. So there's 30 steps. 30 steps is a second. So now, so since we have 15, that means it's gonna go through this two times a second. So let's run it. As you can see, there we go. Now we have a fire rate going. I actually want that to be a bit faster. So we can set the fire rate to say 10, and that'll be three times a second. And you can see now there's drastic improvements. But it's not coming out of the, it's not coming out of the gun, as you can see. So let's, Let's set the origin just a little bit under so that it hits the barrel of the gun, and this will be fine. You you won't be able to notice it. Um, 
And all right, so what happened again? Let me reboot Studio and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back, I relaunched Studio and here we go. So what I was gonna do is I was gonna go into the bolt here real quick and I was going to create or make this speed a little bit higher. So we'll say 20 and now we can replay it. And it's, again, it's all about adjusting to what you think is good. Now I think that's a lot better than what we had before. All right, so there we go. We're, it's looking pretty good now. We have the basic engine going. Now let's go ahead and add the zombies in. So I'm gonna do, in within the entities group, I'm going to say, uh, I'm gonna create a group called Pro and a group named Con, and this will be the the zombies here. So we'll say zombie and we'll load up that sprite. Actually, you know what? We have that on a sprite sheet. So I'm gonna do again the same thing, create from create from strip and zombie course. And here we're gonna go with the zombie strip eight. Again, same thing. I, I believe there's seven, 64 by 64. Maybe there's eight. Yeah, all right. Then you can see in the preview it it makes a it makes a nice list here and it's got the animations. All right, cool. So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna modify the mask, make it an ellipsoid, and this actually looks pretty good right now. There we go. We can do that and that looks pretty good. All right, and of course we'll set the origin the same so that it can rotate on its head. And let's go to the groups, and I'm gonna make again the same groups. So pros and con, and this is actually named pro, not pros. <clears throat> and I'm gonna create this object. So object zombie. There we go. All right. So in the step event, we're gonna have it always look at the player. So again, image angle equals direction. Direction equals, um, actually, you know what we can do? We don't even need the direction variable. We can just say point direction x comma y comma object player dot x object player dot y. There we go. So now if we go ahead and we go in the test room and we plop some zombies down, we run it. As you can see, they're now all looking at me, which is kind of creepy. And they do rotate, so they so they update themselves. And it looks like they're they're running at me. That's that's kind of scary. All right. So yeah, let's go ahead and make them actually run. So in the same the same thing's gonna happen. So create in the create event, set image speed to one. We'll say image index to equal zero. Walking speed equals five, and what was our other one? Uh, set speed equals one. Which I don't, I don't think we'll need, but it's always good to have it. So now, since since this is not going to be a very dedicated like hallways, there's going to be hallways and all that stuff. We're not really going to need advanced pathfinding. We can, we can basically uh, the MP potential step can hold everything to get around a simple tree. So we're just gonna say MP potential step and X, or I'm sorry, object player dot X, object player dot Y at a speed of walking speed and check all true. So we'll save it and we'll run it. And oh my God, okay, yeah, they are running after me. Okay, that's a little bit too fast. So let's make sure that we <laughs> we put the walking speed down. So in the create event, say the walking speed is two. There we go, that's a little better. We can shoot them. And I think, I think the, I 
Let's put this above actually. And we can set this to set speed. So we don't have to do it twice. So I think I'm gonna do the 0 0.3. Because they're not running super fast, so the legs look a little bit awkward. That looks a little bit better. Yeah, that looks better. Maybe I'll maybe I'll try 0 0.5. So we'll try 0 0.5. See how that looks. Yeah, it looks better. All right, there we go. And now let's, okay, so now let's add collision detection. Now, what I did actually was, if I pull up Particle Designer here, is now I have a tutorial series on this. So click that annotation right there, and it will bring you to the first part. It'll open up in a new tab. So it'll bring you to the first part of that series, which tells you all about particles. And basically in the, in the end series, I show you about this program here that, that can create particles for you. And this is going to be the blood splat. So as you can see, I made just a simple thing before I started. And this is just a little particle that sheds blood. All right. So I'm going to go into, and this will, this code for that blood splat will be in the description. And this is the code right here. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to put it into the object of our zombie. I'm going to put the code in here. And at the same time, I'm also going to create a system. So I'm going to say uh, s name equals part type system. Or I'm sorry, part create system, or what is it? Part system create is what I was looking for. Okay, and uh, and then what we do is collision with bullet. We put some code up here, and we're going to say part particles create. Our index is going to be particle one, and x and y. The part type will be. I'm sorry. The part type will be particle one, and the number will be sixty. And this is actually s name. That's how I set it right. Oh, other way around. S name. So it's going to emit 60 particles out of this system and of this type. And then we can destroy other. So with other instance destroy. There we go. So let's run it now. See what we got. There we go. So now, as you can see, we get the particle effect. And let's go ahead and just set up some hit points here. So I'm going to create a variable hit points equals 100. And when you're hit with the bullet, hit points minus equal 50. We'll, OK, so we'll take two shots for the for them to totally die on the first round. Now we'll get to creating uh, a system where the more the rounds go on, the harder it is to kill them. But for now, we'll just do that. And in the step event, we can say if hit points is less than or equal to zero, instance destroy. So let's run it. So there we go. Now that's destroyed. Takes two hits to kill them, and they're dead. And let's. I'm actually kind of feeling a particle system for the bolts, like a little bullet trail. So I'm going to make that in Particle Designer real quick, and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm now back, and let's go ahead and run it. And the particles, I didn't spend too much time on it, and you can clearly see that within the particle effect, but I'll go ahead and shoot. And then you can see it's not too good, but, you know. It's but I think it's better than just the normal bullet that we might have seen. And another thing that just occurred to me, I want this to be a shotgun. You know what? Let's not have the single shot. I want you to basically in this game, I want it to be a massacre. So when we we're going to do this by going in the global left button and we're going to create three instances of bullet. Now, I do have a shotgun effect tutorial, but this is that was using drag and drop. I'm going to show you how to do it within code. Okay, so 
what you can do actually in Game Maker is name your variable or, or create something and then set it within a variable. So now we, we can refer to this object we just created as B2, which stands for bolt two. So in here I could say B2 dot direction plus equals 10 and B3 dot direction minus equals 10. So just by doing that, we get a shotgun effect and I'll go ahead and run it. So if I can get over here, check that out. We now have a shotgun effect. And that's how three bolts split apart. Now, as you can see, there's perfect accuracy here. If you just shoot it, it's gonna hit the same exact target every single time. Let's kind of mix up that accuracy a little bit, right? So, for instance, B2 dot direction plus equals 10, and let's put this in parentheses, plus, and let's add a random state to it. So let's add 10, and let's do the same thing here. And we can say B1 dot direction plus equals random 10. So now, since we did that random, it's gonna be random every time. So it's not, we're not gonna get the same accuracy we always do. So as you can see now, the accuracy is a little split apart. It's not as accurate. And also what I'm gonna do in this object player is just say randomize, and that's gonna randomize all, all, of, the, all of the random functions we use. Right, so I actually want this just a tad more, so we'll say 20. Actually, we can do this 10 and that can be 20. And again, this gives a whole new dimension to the game. And 20 might be a little bit. There we go. 20 might be a little bit extreme. So we'll say 10. I think 10 was good. So there we go. All right, so that's how you kind of conflict with accuracy. Now, of course, you could put this 10 into a variable and name it accuracy. Copy and paste it down. And in the create event, set that. So right next to the fire rate, we can set accuracy to equal 10. And we run it, it does the exact same thing. So now the game, this makes the game obviously a little bit harder than it was. And the closer you are, it's actually kind of cool because the closer you are to the zombie, the more accuracy you're going to get because they don't, they continue spraying out after a long distance. So it's going to actually be harder to get some, get a zombie at that distance rather than this distance, very close, which kind of correlates to real life, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty cool mechanic. All right, so there we go. Now let's go ahead and let's go with the scene here. So I'm gonna go into my, my main room here. And here we have the scene. And I'm gonna drop my player into there. Not the bullet. I'm just gonna put my player in the center. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna create all of this within creation code. So instance create room width divided by two minus sprite width divided by two, and we'll put that in parentheses, so it does that before everything. It should do that with the order of operations, but just to make sure. And then room height divided by two minus sprite height divided by two. And this is gonna put it exactly dead center in the room, and this is gonna be object player. And our views, enable the use of views, and we're gonna follow our player here. And we'll set the H4 and V4 to 320. And let's run it, and we're still in the test room, so let's do that. Let's bring over the main. So there we go, now we have our player. I can now roam around the field and as you can see whoa what is this um, it doesn't actually stretch through so let's go ahead and check that out so I'm not gonna make it stretch I'm just gonna make it tile horizontally 
horizontally and vertically. And uh, still the H bar will be one, all right? There we go, let's run it again. And now we are in this world that we can walk around in and shoot our bullets. Pretty cool. All right. Now let's create the trees. And this is going to be what is going to be the uh, 3D part of it. So I'm going to create a group, static objects. I know we already created this, but when I rebooted Studio, it, it uh, erased that. So I'm going to call this sprite tree. I'm going to load it up. Here's the tree right here. And I'm going to center the origin. And I'm going to modify the mask. Now this modification is very important because uh, we're going to be, we don't want, we want the contact to be with the trunk, which would be obviously a lot smaller than it is. So I'm going to say 30, 30, 79, 79. And that's going to be the trunk right there. All right. So now if we, if we create an object, call it static objects. Actually, I'm creating a group right now. And we create this tree. Object tree. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert back to a previous tutorial, which an annotation right now will be on the screen. Open up, opens up in a new tab, and that is going to be the 3D fake 3D engine that uh, that I sort of showcased. And that's all of the code I'm going to be using. So I'm going to copy all of the code into here. You can take a look at that video if you want more. And uh, yeah, I'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and added all of the code. Now again, you can click that annotation. And here we go. This is all of the code I set for the tree. And if we run it, you'll now see that the trees look 3D. And here's the tree here. And as you can see, as you go around it, the tree pivots to your point, to, to the area you're looking at. So we go around the tree here. As you can see, it kind of rotates. It kind of looks spooky. It's kind of like... It's a, uh, it's like rotating in the wind of some sort. <laughs> but as you can see, we have no collision. So let's work on that right now. So let's make the tree solid. And we can say uh, collision with our tree. Put in some code. Move contact solid direction 12 so now if we run the game and we hit the tree you can see we stop so there we go we have full collision working so there we go that looks pretty cool so I just went ahead and plopped those trees in the room just to sort of test everything out um, let's take that out and let's go into the creation code And let's create these trees. So let's create a random variable. And let me get to the very end of this. Put that in curly braces. Let's create a variable. Let's call it random, or no, let's call it tree count. Equals floor random 30 plus 10. Okay, so I want a lot of trees. There's gonna be a lot of trees. All right, and let's create a for loop. I equals zero. I is less than tree count. I plus plus. Now I'm gonna demonstrate a problem that we run into and I can demonstrate how to fix that as well. But for now, I'm just gonna show you and then we'll run into the problem. But random room width will spawn it at and random room height. And then our object tree. So let's run it. And as you can see, now we have lushful trees in the in the distance here, um, and they spawn randomly. And I actually kind of like how they're on the border right there. It kind of sets you like you're closed in. I actually like that so much that, you know what? Let's not do that. I'm just gonna create a quick border.
around my entire map. And so this, it's not going to be like, oh, you know, that's the end. It's going to kind of be like you're encaved in this little tree collage, <laughs> for lack of a better word. <laughs> and uh, let's put one right here. And there's no way of getting out. And then within that, we will create the within this we'll create all of the random trees that spawn so I hope the depth is not gonna be an issue here I'm not sure the depth might be an issue and that might cause some red flags that I might have to adjust to so let's go ahead and check that and I spawn into a tree that that was the problem I was going to show you but right now let me try and solve and I spawn into another what is this okay hold on <laughs> In the creation code, just to make sure I'm getting this right, let's set randomize. There we go. So it looks like everything's good. Um, All that's good. It looks a little awkward because all of the trees are, and that needs to come forward more. All of the trees are the same height and there's equally spaced gaps. So I can, I think I can do something like this. Let me pause it now and then I'll come back to you once I got everything complete. All right, so if I run it, you can see that I made a good tree line. I, I collaged a little bit more trees in there. And as you can see, it's a little bit better of a tree line that you can't really get through. I mean, there's going to be some glitches where you can get through here. Uh, but again, that's just all patchwork that I'll probably just end up doing off camera. Because this game will be for download. So you can kind of run through it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the GMK down, not just the, not just the EXE. So again, there, there's a couple glitches I'm sure in here. And this kind of looks awkward where it's like three in a row. But that's not really part of the main programming. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and finish that. All there is is, all you need to know is there's a tree line. You can do whatever you like in your game. Uh, I mean, these could be buildings for all I know, you know. So you might not have that problem. But anyways, let's go back to the creation code. And I had to comment out the tree count to zero just so I could test that. Okay, so there we go. And first, also we're going to create the player before we do this. All right. And what we're going to do inside here is instead of do, uh, creating it within the instance create, we're going to create variables. So var xx equals random room width, var yy equals random room height. And in here, we're just going to set yy and xx. But first, before we do that, and the problem was that some trees would spawn on top of other trees. So that's a problem. So in here, we're going to say um, if place free xxyy, then we're going to instance create this. Else, we're going to create it again. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Let's let's think of something because we need to basically make a loop. So if place free instance create that that that. Uh, all right, all right. So here's what we're gonna do: take out that if place meeting, and we're gonna say while not place free x x y y. Then we'll do curly braces and we'll put these variables inside there. And then, so it's gonna loop through here. So if our first positions are not true, then it's gonna create new ones and it's gonna look, hey, if it's if the place is free, then break out of this loop and create the tree. So let's run it. Now, also, they still might be a little closer together because remember our collision mask was, uh, our collision mask was a little small and that's for the trunk of the tree. But here we go. And look at that, it looks like there are n no trees on 
top of each other, besides for my tree line, which is, <laughs> again, I'll, I'll fix that off camera. But there we go. So actually, I want a little bit more trees. So just all you have to do by doing this is just, so right here, plus 20, that means there's going to be a minimum of 20 trees, plus possibly 30 more. All right, so let's run it. And here we go. So this is a little bit more realistic. You know, we got this huge tree line. Let's not, you know, let's not make it unrealistic by just having a field in here. So we we also have trees all all around here, and uh, this is good. This is good. This is looking good. The atmosphere is getting there. Map's a little bit small, but that's all right. You know, that's how I set it for, and I'm not redoing that tree line. <laughs> all right. So now that we're done with that. With the bullet, I'm also gonna, just going to say collision with the tree. Instance destroy itself. All right, there we go. All right, so let's move on to our spotlight now. So we're going to go into the static objects, and I'm just going to create sprite light. I'm going to load this up, and it's going to be the spotlight right here. So here it is. That'll be up for download. And I'm just gonna center it. And I'm gonna create an object in the static. Object light, doesn't need a sprite. And in the draw event, what we're gonna do is we are gonna say, draw set blend mode, BM add. And then we're gonna draw the sprite. So draw sprite sprite light negative one x and y actually uh, now we're going to do object player under, uh, dot x and object player dot y and then we have to draw the set blend mode back to normal so bm normal there we go so let's just put it in the room now just put it anywhere now we run it, and as you can see, we have a faint spotlight. It's kind of hard to see, um, but it just adds that that next thing to the game that we need, you know. So all right, there we go. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. Now I think we're gonna add the zombie stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna create another group, and it's gonna be called controllers. And if we create something, and I'm, I'm going to call this O spawn. And this is going to be a global spawner. So in the create event, we're going to set spawn rate to equal 100. Yeah. Actually, you know what? We'll do this every second. So there's a lot of ways you can do spawning within any game. There's a, there's a ton of ways. In this game, we're going to do it time-based, and that's how Pixelbit Trials is if you're familiar with my game that I've been working on for iOS. A link in the annotation will be right there. Shameless plug. Now, the spawn rate, okay, is going to be by the time. So, again, 30 steps is one second. So, 60 steps is two seconds. So, I want something to spawn on the first round every three seconds, plus there's going to be a random... Uh, uh, time unit that's added to that to make it a little bit random so it's not just these waves and clusters of them coming at you. Alright, so then I can say uh, in the step event actually, you know what, sorry. Set spawn rate to 90 and we'll set alarm 0 to equal spawn rate. So now in alarm 0 instance create x comma y comma object zombie alarm zero equals spawn rate plus a random amount so we'll say 30 so plus a random second so it could possibly be four seconds and I'll do the same thing for here actually you know what I'll do I'll do 60 actually you know what I'm going to put this into a variable, time diff, because I want to shrink this as we go on in the rounds. So time diff. And I'll create this as a variable. Time diff equals 60. 
So in our main, let's go ahead and plop this around. So let's create one right here, one right here, here. We could do it on the corners, here, here, and here. And I actually want to give this a sprite of, actually no, we won't, we won't give this a sprite. But the only problem I could see running in is that it's tree spawns on there. So let's see what happens. Okay, so we're in the game. And here we go, we got zombies spawning. Oh my god, it's so scary. Now they're a little dumb. This is pretty cool. And that's a lot of zombies. Oh my god. Yeah, now they're a little dumb. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is, I don't know. Let's see here. Let's see how dumb they really are. If I run around the map a little bit. Oh my god. Too many zombies. Okay, so as you, oh my god, that's a lot. Run! That's a lot of zombies. That shotgun is pretty cool. That kind of takes them out right away. All right, we'll leave that. We'll leave that AI for now. If you want more advanced AI, I'll put an annotation in the screen right now, and that is my advanced uh, pathfinding AI. So there you go. All right. So now, right in the in here, just to stop trees from spawning onto the spawn points in the creation code. If place not free and distance to object O spawn, and I call that O spawn, I should call it object spawn just to keep everything ready, is greater than 64. Let's rename this to object spawn. So now, it should be impossible for a tree to um, go on the spawn points. So let's check all the spawn points here. There we go, there we go. And so basically there's gonna be a gap of 64 between each spawn point. And let's play it one more time just to make sure. Um, okay, it didn't work. <laughs> okay, uh, it actually did work. I just went ahead and put this up to a greater, a greater number. So two, there's a 200 pixel gap. 64 was a little small, so half of it was still spawning within it. So there we go. Save it and we run it. As you can see, there's that. And it looks like it still doesn't work. <laughs> all right, hold on. Let me try this one more time. I'll be back. All right, all right. I, I think I fixed it. Um, here is the creation code right here. Uh, just if place free x x y y, then we're gonna create the tree, and you actually don't need that as a variable. Um, but now, so copy all this. I'll, I'll wait a second so you can pause the video or something and see it and analyze it. And so I'll check that off. And then in the tree here, I'm just gonna check. You know. If distance to object, object spawn is greater than 32, instance destroy. So we'll just check it within the object itself. So we'll run it, and I haven't tested this, so if this doesn't work, I'm gonna be pretty mad. Okay, so there's one, there's one. And there we go, okay. Kind of, all right, so I think we just need to make this a little bit bigger. 
64. And this is how game development is, you know. Uh, have to have to just keep experimenting and uh, seeing what works and what doesn't work. And after a while, you find techniques that you can use that you know solve problems that you ran into in your beginning days. So there you go, words of wisdom. Okay, so it looks like this spawn works. Um, we'll we'll just continue on with the programming. And if it doesn't, if I see it again, then I'll go off camera. I'll make sure it works. And then we'll see. Then we'll see what happens there. All right. So there we go. Let's create the heads-up display now, which is pretty fun. So I'm gonna create an object, and I'm gonna call it object H U D. And in the create event, I'm gonna set hit points to equal 100, and I'm gonna draw a health bar. So in the draw event, draw health bar. So. I'm going to draw it at view underscore x view 0, view underscore y view 0, <clears throat> and then the x2 is going to be hit points. Actually, no, that's going to, it's going to be um, 300, and the y2 is going to be 100. The amount is going to be hit points. Back color is going to be C red. Min color, or no, we'll do, yeah, we'll do C red. Min color, C green. C green. Direction zero, show back, true, show border, true. So let's see if this works. We'll run it. And we can't see anything. Oh, here it is. <laughs> All right, let's see what's wrong here. And we're drawing, okay, so here we need to say view underscore x view zero plus 300, view underscore y view zero plus, and then I'm gonna make this 64 because that looked a little big. Now let's run it. Okay, so there we go, we have the health bar. Now, it looks a little odd. And there's our glitch again. Now, it looks a little bit odd, and it's going under the trees, as you can see. So we can fix that by setting the negative 9999 uh, depth here, and that's gonna make it above everything. So I'm gonna say 100, actually, and this is gonna be 32. We'll try that. And I'm in the tree. Yeah, spawning's a little jacked. I'll have to fix that. Uh, but here we go. So x view underscore x view, and then I'm going to say plus five, just to give it a little gap. There we go. So there's our little health bar. Maybe we can make it a little bit bigger. Maybe 150. There we go, that looks good. All right, so now we can roam around our forest of greatness. Here we're roaming, we're roaming. Find some zombies, shoot them down. Uh, I'm not gonna add, I'm not gonna be adding sounds in this game just because I don't have any. Uh, I, I could actually, I could add a some background music. Let's do that actually. So I'm gonna create a sound real quick, load in a sound I had from a while ago. I could do that. Yeah, pretty cool sound. Not PKG. SND music. And then with our my player here, in the create event, I can just through drag and drop, just play the code play the sound here. Loop true. Whoa, that's loud. And we run it, let it convert for the first time. Come on now. And just hurry up now. 
All right, I'll pause it. I'll be right back. And we got it compiling. So here it is. And the sound doesn't even work. Hold on. Let's go to global game settings. And let's uncheck this use new audio engine. That should work. Now this is only if you're in studio. It should work if you're in any if you're in anything else. And I still don't hear it. Hmm, hold on. And of course the problem was that my mixer was actually the zombie game <laughs> volume was all the way down. Go ahead and recheck that use uh, new audio engine, and everything should work out for you if you want to use sounds there. So let's go ahead and run it real quick. And here we go. There it is. All right, so now it is a question of what to do next. So let's go ahead and do the health. I'm actually gonna turn that down. But you know, sound works there. So I'm gonna do it so the health drains, which is not difficult at all. And then uh, round spawning, and then we should be done. Uh, and then for the download, the spawning will work on your download, hopefully. If I'm feeling lazy, then I might just put that put this final product up there but all right so let's go ahead and go into the player collision with the enemy zombie hit points minus equals one save it run it and we'll see what we get Here we have it running, and let's go ahead and hit a zombie, and uh-oh, we don't have that variable. Let's see here. Ah, oh, right, I set hit points within the heads-up display. So I'm just going to make that a global variable, just so we can use it. Global. And then go into the player here and set that to global. Now if we run it, always save before you run. I've had my misfortunes in that sense that sometimes it would save the executable and it would crash. And that was not fun, I'll tell you that much. That's how my first computer died. I threw it out the window, that's a true story. Anyways, <clears throat> back to the game, as you can see, whoa! We're getting hit. We're getting hit. Whoa! 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 Die! 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 You are hurting me. Okay, that's that's what you want. <laughs> that's what you want gamers to say when playing your game. So there you go. All right. Now let's go ahead and do a quick spawning system. This should be pretty easy. Let's go into the create event. Let's set global dot level to equal one. And in the draw event. We can just say draw set color, C black, draw font, not draw font, draw text, U underscore X view, zero plus 10 we'll say, view underscore Y view, zero, plus view underscore H view, zero, minus, I don't know why I put a semicolon there. And then we'll just say string. Or yeah, we'll say uh, level plus string global dot level. So now let's run it. A lot of running. And um, the compiling process can be a pain sometimes. There we go, it's a little bit low, so we can fix that. So 
so two minus two minus twenty. There we go. And now let's go ahead and just quickly do the the spawning system. So in the create event, we'll set alarm zero to equal. And we'll pull up the calculator. How many seconds do we want each wave to be? We could say each wave will be fifteen seconds. So four hundred and fifty. In alarm zero. Alarm zero equals four fifty. Global dot level plus plus. And of course, object spawn dot, and this is where we can use the dot operator. And you know what we can do with? We can do with. So with object spawn. And let's go, let's go into here real quick. So we have time diff and spawn rate. So time diff minus equals five and spawn rate minus equals 15. So as you go, they're gonna start coming at you a lot faster. So let's, let's play it. If this all works out, this should be a finished game, technically. I mean, you know, you know, you st you'd still need to put a bunch of menus and and uh, health packs and all that. And here we go. So we're at level one, and you can see in the bottom left there, and of course the spawning system, a little jacked up. So after 15 seconds, level two we have now. Whoa. Ah! We're on level three. So they should start spawning a lot faster. We're at level four now. And you can see the zombies are piling up and I'm mowing them down like no tomorrow. <laughs> oh my God. We're at level five. Oh, okay, I would've died. Okay, let's just go through this <laughs> horde of zombies. Now let's see how, how much they actually spawn. They're actually getting stuck in each other. They're spawning. They're spawning so fast they're getting stuck in each other. These are all glitches that you can, I'm sure of it, if you've gone this far in the tutorial, I'm sure you can, you know, tough through it and you can figure out a way to fix these glitches. So I'm gonna leave this homework to you. Fix the spawning glitches, fix the spawning issues right here, and then there, yeah, so do that because this is already getting too, too long and I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna, uh, uh, be precise with the little glitches in the game. This is the main me mechanics of the game. So I hope you learned something. If you toughed it out this far, don't tell anybody else. But if you if you went through this entire video, leave me in the comments that you did, and let me know if it helped you out. I mean, a comment always. I I read all my comments, so please go ahead and do that. And uh, be sure to leave a like and tell me if you want another one of these series, maybe on a different different type of game, maybe a fighting game, maybe. You know who knows a racing game, something like that. So go leave a like, go and subscribe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go crazy here. Let's try for 100 likes. I have never gotten 100 likes on a video yet, so if we do this, it'll be amazing. Leave a like, go ahead and subscribe if you like this and want more. And I'll see you guys next time.